my late father, Hareni Kapoas Mishkovi, of Imairi. It is on the first day of Shavuos, 1945, Tovshi and Dada, that he arrived in Birkenau, in Auschwitz. And on that very same day, he last saw his father, his mother, five of his siblings. The family was torn asunder. They were sent right to the gas chambers. He and two brothers were sent left to life. One day later, second day Yamtev, the great Kloizenberg Rebbe, Moiri Varabi, Zeichet Tzadik V'Kodesh Lavrocha, arrived in Birkenau. My father came from the little town of Salish. He didn't know the Kloizenberg Rebbe, but he heard a great deal about him. And when my father heard that the Kloizenberg Rebbe arrived, and he was one barracks, one building next to the place my father stayed, my father very much wanted to know him, to be close to him. But Birkenau was nothing like the Hilton of the Sheraton. You wanted to change a room. You didn't go to reception and ask for another room. It didn't work that way. So in the middle of the night, my father sneaked over to the other barracks and he changed his spot with another person. And in the morning, he happily walked over to the Rebbe and said, I made an effort, and Boch Hashem, I was matzliach to be here right close to you. And the great Rebbe frowned upon him. And he said, the mindset that a Pesthelfen said to Gunish Helfen, if you think it's going to do you any good, it won't do you any good. My father responded, Avadavetes Mahelfen, Chalhob Medvein Tzeredin Alanen, of course it's going to do me good. We'll be able to talk and learning. And the Rebbe was taken aback and he said, Bocha, you're in Auschwitz and you want to talk and learning? To which my father responded, Yes, Rebbe, of course I want to talk and learning. If we won't talk and learning, how will we prevail? How, how will he make it? How will we live through this, this Gehenna? The Rebbe was moved. He hugged my father. And for the next 12 months, Leizazi Yodem and Tachyode, they were together. From Birkenau to Warsaw, to clear away the rubble after the uprising was destroyed, the ghetto was destroyed. From Warsaw to Dachau, from Dachau to Tutsi, from Tutsi to Mildorf, until they were liberated. And right after the liberation, the Rebbe asked for volunteers to care for the dead because the bodies were everywhere. The bodies of those Kedoshim that were murdered. No one volunteered. My father was the only one. So they had an American army jeep and an army driver, and day and night they roamed the fields and brought the deceased to KV Yisrael. When it was over, the Rebbe asked my father whether he has any special request. And my father said, yes. I want a brocha to have children, Talmidah Chachomim. Upon, upon which the Rebbe gave him a brocha that his children should uh, light up the world with the, with the light of Torah. But a year and a half after the liberation, after caring for the dead, they dedicated all their energies to care for the living to try to rebuild Beis Yisrael. Building mikvahs, establishing yeshivas for the boys, schools for the girls. After a year and a half, my father approached the Rebbe and he said, I think I have done enough. I think I paid my share and I want to go back to learning. My father was a tremendous ilu, he was a tremendous Talmud Chacham. And he told the Rebbe, I haven't opened a Gemara for more than two years. I want to go back to learning. And the Rebbe once again frowned upon him. And he said, Moshe, you know nothing about Mesirus Nefesh. Really? You know nothing about Mesirus Nefesh. You think that depriving oneself from food or drinks is Mesirus Nefesh. No, that's Mesirus Aguf. Closing your Gemara for Klal Yisrael. That is Mesiris Nefesh. Needless to say, my father stayed on with the Rebbe. 
And for years, these two giants, these two giants that did not despair over their personal tragedy, that Abby lost a wife and 11 children. My father was a young boy. He was 17, 18 years old. He lost his parents and most of his siblings. But they found the strength and the courage to dedicate all their energies to rebuild Torah, to rebuild Yiddishkeit in America, and then in Eretz Yisrael. 65 years passed, fast forward, and my father was 80 years old. Gvurais. And I planned to go to Poland for a Holocaust study with a group of my Hasidim and good friends. With trepidation, I approached my father and asked him, would you want to come along? And I was totally surprised when he said, yes, I will come along. And I was really afraid what will happen, how will he react when we will stand next to the train tracks in Birkenau. And my father, with tremendous courage and strength, stood there and he said, this is the very place where I last saw most of my family. And it is then the first time that I ever heard from my father what were the last words that he heard from his father before the family was torn apart. And my father told me the last words I heard from my father when he looked around and he realized what's happening. He said, Moshe, kiksachim of Dana bridalach. Moshe, watch over your brothers. And I think that my father's interpretation was not only referring to his two younger brothers, Hershey and Yechiel, he took that as a, as a command. Care for your brothers, care for your brethren. We all share the same fathers. We are all a Kodesh Bochu's children. That was my father's interpretation. And those two giants, my great Rebbe, the Kloisimagar Rebbe, and my late father, those two giants, rose to the challenge and dedicated all their energies for Klal Yisrael. My dear friends, Talmidim, and lovers of Torah in the entire world. In the Jewish world, there's a tremendous thirst for Torah. I'm trying to inspire and teach my Talmidim to Paskin in the most complicated matters of halacha. The hundreds of Talmidim are Talmidim Chachum of the highest caliber. Many of these Talmidim will be the leaders and the teachers of Torah of the coming generation. And I need your help and I need your support. I need partners. And I plead with you, please be my partners. But the opportunities are limitless. The sky is the limit. There is so much more we could do.